This video topic was requested by my patron, Landon Bowers. If you would like to become a patron and have your video request prioritized, link down below. English is complicated, the rules make no sense, the spelling is hodgepodge. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about role-playing in English for people with English as a second language. If you've been role-playing for a while, you've probably come across role-plays in German, in Japanese, in Spanish, but let's be honest, the vast majority of role-play online exists in English. That means if you want your pick of role-plays, if you want your pick of role-play partners, you kind of got to role-play in English. I don't make the rules, I just inform you guys of what they are. So what do you do if English is not your native language? Maybe you learned English in school and you're okay at it. You can communicate in English, you can watch English YouTube, you can read English plenty well enough, you're all good there. But that is a totally different thing than writing in English. So these are my top tips for role playing in English if you are ESL. And the whole theme of this, basically to give you all a spoiler, is practice, practice, practice. Nothing I am going to say in this video is going to fix your English overnight. So if you are looking for quick fixes, if you are looking for something fast, then you can go ahead and close this video, I guess, because that's not what I'm going to tell you. Um, but, but please, but please don't close this video. The YouTube gods really love watch time. All right, so on to the tips. Number one, tell people you are ESL. I'll tell you guys a secret. Okay, okay, come here, come here. Native speakers aren't that good at English. We are, we're bad at it. English is complicated, the rules make no sense, the spelling is hodgepodge, the punctuation is kind of random. It doesn't make any sense. So native English speakers, usually not that good at it. English is the textbook definition of a language that has evolved over time. Oftentimes native speakers, we don't know why something is the way it is. It's just, well, English has been doing it that way for a while, so that's how we do it. If you're not an English scholar, likely you don't know why the word is spelled that way, it just is. So if you're ESL, just tell people. They will give you grace, they will not care. Most role players care way more about your social skills, your characterization skills, your plotting skills, than they care about your technical writing skills and your prose. You can totally be a successful role player while still working on your prose. So let people know so they have that opportunity to give you that grace. Rule number two, read and speak English at every opportunity. Reading and speaking English, of course, are not exactly the same skill as writing in English, but they are related skills. So the better that your speaking gets, the better that your reading gets, the better your writing's gonna get. Reading and using context clues is the best way to learn new words in English. That's basically how us native speakers did it, and that's what I would recommend for you too. So when you don't know a word, look at the context around that word, what the rest of the sentence is saying, and you can typically figure out what that word means. And don't be scared, of course, to look up a word to be sure. For this looking up words, I recommend using a dictionary that goes from English to your native language, as well as a dictionary that is just in English, that just defines the words in English. So you can find both of these kinds of dictionaries online, they're all over the place, but why am I suggesting that you need to have both? This is because words are not always one-to-one -one between languages, particularly conceptual words like love or friendship or trust. They mean slightly different things in these different languages, even if they're kind of the same word. So if you're only using your dictionary that goes from your native language to English and vice versa, then you're gonna miss out on the connotations of certain words that an actual just English dictionary is going to give you. So then you can use both in tandem to make sure you're fully translating what you meant to say properly. Tip number three, use English in other areas of your life. Don't save English for just role play or even just for the internet. Use it for other times that you need to write something down in your life. For example, write your grocery list in English, write your to-do list in English, take your class notes or your meeting notes in English. Use every opportunity to practice writing your English. This is gonna help you learn words and structures that are maybe not super common in the role play world, but all native English speakers are gonna know them, so it's going to help you all around. Next tip, number four, 
connect with other ESL role players. Remember how in tip number one we said to tell people that you're ESL? Well, if you're doing that, then you're inevitably gonna run across other ESL role players. Build friendships with those people. You can lean on each other for critiquing each other's writing, for correcting issues in the writing, and for overall improving your prose. Especially if they have the same native language as you, you're gonna be able to communicate on a level that's difficult for native English speakers to communicate with you. So you guys can learn and grow together. All right, to recap, I had four tips for our ESL role players. The first one is tell people your ESL. The second one is read and speak English. The third one, use English in other areas of your life. And the fourth one, connect with other ESL role players. So that is it. That's my tips if you are ESL and you're role playing in English or you're trying to start role playing in English. This is something that I know you guys can all do. A lot of my favorite role players are ESL, so it is something you can absolutely accomplish, even if your English skills right now are not so great. So if you think these helped you, if you're going to start working on your English, let me know down below. I would love to hear your stories. And of course, don't forget, as always, to make it a great day.